My beloved brothers and sisters, we praise Allah the Almighty. We believe in him, we trust in him, and we bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's messenger and his slave. Whomever Allah guides is guided aright. And whomever Allah leaves to err, no one can guide them. We ask Allah to bless his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we ask Allah to bless his companions, all of them, and his family. Ameen. Yaqulullah Azza wa Jal, wa anta sumu khayru lakum in kuntum ta'lamun. And that you fast is better for you if you but knew it. Not too long ago, I was listening to a minister give a sermon. And in his sermon, he surprised me by saying that he would go to paradise. There is no doubt about it. And I asked myself the question as a Muslim, what do I and what do we believe about us going to Jannah? I believe that every one of us here today want to go to Al Jannah and to avoid going to the hellfire. I believe that. But what I want to know this afternoon in this masjid is there any one of you who can say for sure, ain't no doubt about it, I will go to Jannah. If there is even one of you, I want to give today a wake-up call. Itlamu anna Allah shadidu al-iqab wa anna Allah ghafuru rahim You better know that Allah is severe in punishing on the one hand, but on the other hand, he's forgiven and merciful. Even the prophets of Allah have this feeling about Allah so that even on the day of judgment, when every human being will go to Adam and go to Moses and go to Abraham and go to Jesus, they all say the same thing. Nafsi, nafsi, nafsi. Oh, myself, myself, myself. Idhabu ila Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am concerned about my own self. So today, I would like to give a wake-up call. I... I am a convert to Islam. I am a revert. The best day of my life, without a doubt, when I became a Muslim. There is nothing that can compare for me the joy with being a Muslim. All of you brothers and sisters who've been blessed to have Muslim parents, you were born to Muslim parents. How blessed you are. Some of them even brag. They say, Imam Siraj, you're, you're just a convert. I was born in Islam. I will caution you that it is not how you begin the race, but how you end the race. After all, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Kullu maludun yuludu ala fitra. Everyone by nature, every human being is born by nature, a Muslim. And their parents make them Jews, and their parents make them Christians, and their parents make them this or that. Why was I a Christian? Because my mother was a Christian. 
But why was I a Baptist? I was a Baptist because my mother was a Baptist. Had she been a Jehovah Witness, I would have been a Jehovah Witness. Had she been a Mormon, I would have been a Mormon. Had she been a Catholic, I would have been a Catholic. How blessed you are. When you are being raised up by your mother and your father, your father, brother, take you by the hand as a young man and walk you and bring you to the masjid. Nobody ever brought me to the masjid. As a young boy and young girl, your mother and father read to you Quran, recite to you the words of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nobody ever recited Quran to me. Nobody ever read me hadith. As you're a young child, your mother and father trying to encourage you to fast in the month of Ramadan. Nobody encouraged me to fast in the month of Ramadan. But this is the issue. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Innam al ahmalu bil khawatim. Your deeds shall be judged by your last deeds. Don't tell me how you were born, but tell me how you died. La tamutuna illa wa antum muslimu. Don't die! Not don't be born, don't die. Don't die except as a Muslim. It's good your mother and father did all that to you. That's good. That's fine. But the question is what about today? So today, for a few moments, I'd like to give us a wake-up call. I got a wake-up call from Umar, radiallahu an, And I would like to tell you about that wake-up call, inshallah. As the brothers continue to to come in, come to the side, inshallah, so we get everybody in. What's the issue? What's the issue with human beings? The issue is that human beings are sinners. Yes, human beings are sinners. Over and over again. Allah said in the Quran, I have not created, I have not created the jinn nor the humans except to worship me. We are sinners. And every religion recognizes the fact that we are sinners. Christians recognize it. Jews recognize it. Hindus and Buddhists and Sikhs all realize that the problem with human beings is that they are sinners. How to get rid of the sin? I remember years ago I'm standing in front of my masjid in Brooklyn early in the morning. And this young man comes with four children. One of them, a little girl, about seven or eight years old, she was lingering behind. And he looked at that young girl and said, come on, come on, come on, let's go, come on. And I can almost see her little face now saying to this man, saying to this young man, leave me alone. You are not my father. Leave me alone. And I was haunted by the words of this young girl for years in my mind saying, leave me alone. You are not my father. And what she was saying, that inherently every human being recognizes the right of their parents to admonish them and the right of their parents to punish them. She knows if that's, that was her father, he has a right over her. Well, if fathers and mothers have a right over children, our nation, the United States of America, is the third most populated nation in the world. We have a population of some 300 million people. And even though we are the, uh, represent only 5% of the total population of the world, we have in our nation 25% of the prisoners of the world are in the United States of America. If all those in prison in the United States was a state, we would be the 17th most populated state in the nation. Everybody recognizes the, the right 
of the nation to punish its citizens. Famous cases around the country right now determining the fate of people because of the inherent right of the nation to punish its people, even to put them to death, put them in prison, find them. If parents have this right to punish, if nations have the right to punish its citizens, what about Allah, the creator of the heaven and earth, has a right to punish his slaves? And this is why the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that the Prophet said, Hadith Qudsi, that Allah said, Ya ibadi, kulukun dolun illa man hadaytu fastahduni ahdikum. Oh, my servants, every one of you, every one of you are misguided. Therefore, ask me and I will guide you. 17 times a day, every day, at least. We say, Idina Surat al Mustaqim. Oh Allah, guide me on the straight path. Why? Because some of us are misguided? No. Every one of us are misguided. So the problem of man is the problem of sin. How are we going to deal with this sin? One of my hobbies is reading bumper stickers. Oh, I love to read bumper stickers. On my way to the masjid one morning, four o'clock in the morning, I'm driving my car. And in front of me is a car with a bumper sticker, Allahu Akbar, a bumper sticker. I say to myself, and I read the bumper sticker, and the bumper sticker says, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Then I'm driving in Atlanta, Georgia, down 85 South. And I behold a billboard. And the billboard said, Jesus is Lord. And then one block from my masjid, one block west, there's a big church. And on the top of the church is a sign, Jesus is Lord. So the Christian ministers tell them, if you want to get rid of your sin, all you have to do is accept Jesus as a savior and you would get rid of your sin. And that scared me. I got a wake up call from Omar radiallahu an, and I would like to give you the wake up call. How are we going to get rid of this sin? It is interesting to note what the Prophet said, alayhi salat wa salam. Man soma Ramadan. Iman wa ahtisabin. Gufira lahu ma taqadama min dhambihi. Whoever fast during the month of Ramadan with faith and seeking a reward from Allah Allah would forgive us our sins. I said, ah, ah, this is why, this is why we go the whole day in the summertime and it's hot. I just came from Australia a couple of days ago and they have their winter right now. I mean, subhanAllah. Sunset like five something. They fast a few hours. But you in Nashville, Tennessee, all those hours in the hot and the heat and you can't even drink water. Why you do that? Because Allah has given us a way to get rid of some of our sins. Incredibly. Incredibly. Muslims all over the world who have the ability to fast, they won't fast one day in the month of Ramadan. Why? They're sinners. Allah give us this opportunity to get rid of the sin. This great month of Ramadan, and even though Allah give us the ability by his mercy to get rid of the sin, some Muslims won't even take the opportunity for the great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
we are sins, sinners. But the prophet didn't stop there, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, man, call, man. من قام رمضان إيمان واحتساب كفر له ما تكذب من ذنبه. Whoever stands up, stands up during the month of Ramadan. What do you mean stand up? They pray the Fara'id. No, 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 not the Fara'id. I'm not talking about Fajr. I'm not talking about Asr. I'm not talking about Maghrib. I'm talking about Salat al-Tarawih, Salat al-Tahajjud, Qiyam al-Layl. I'm talking about extra prayer. Whoever does that in the month of Ramadan, Allah would do what? Forgive them their sins. Oh, man must be a sinner. But the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he didn't stop there. Whoever stands in the night of power. When is the night of power? We think it's the last 10 nights. So the last 10 nights, someone is trying to stand up and trying to find Layla to Qadr. Maybe they stand up one night, maybe the 27th night, maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's later to Qadr. And if you stand and you pray in that day, what will you be given as a reward? Allah will forgive you your sins. Man must be a sinner. I had given a hadith to my students. Hadith of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. And one student says to me, she is a principal of a school, a very smart woman. When I gave this tradition of our prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, she said, Imam, that is a dangerous hadith. That is a dangerous hadith. I said what the prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, La lam tuthnibu. If you had not committed sin, if you have never committed sin, Allah would destroy you, get rid of you, and bring a people who would sin so that they will ask Allah's forgiveness so that Allah will forgive them. <gasps> what are you saying? I'm saying you don't understand the Arabic language. Walau, lau, lam tuthnibu. This lau doesn't mean like in if you study you become smart no 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 lao means ain't gonna happen it's not a possibility if you had not committed sin no if you never would have not committed no no you, you human being can i tell you something about us if you can give me a moment to tell us me something about us as human beings وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَعِلُونَ فِي الْعَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ دِمَاءً And when Allah said to the angels, I'm about to make a, a vicegerent in the earth, they said, are you going to make in the earth that which is going to cause mischief and the shedding of blood while we celebrate your praises? قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ He said, I know what you know not. Man and jinn. Man and jinn. You got to be careful with man and jinn because man and jinn can go either way. What you mean can go either way? Man is a sinner. Let's start with our father Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. With kulna ya Adam Uskun anta wa zawjuka al janna wa qula minha ragadan haytu shittu ma wa la taqraba haadhihi shajarata fatakuna min al-zhalimeen. Oh, Adam, you and your wife live in the garden and eat whatever you want in the garden. Whatever you want in this garden, just one thing. Don't, don't go near this tree. That's it. One commandment. Don't go near the tree. And lo and behold, our father Adam and our mother ate from the tree. Human beings can go either way. Want me to give another example? What were the angels concerned about? You're going to put on the earth mischief makers and shed of the blood? How soon was man created? How soon was he created that we had the first murder? 
Ibn Awl, Adam's first son. Murder! Now, in America, every year, 16,000, 17,000 people will be murdered. Every year in America, some 30,000 people will take their own lives. It's suicide. Someone once said that suicide is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Man! Liars and stealers and cheaters and deceivers, man and gin. How far can we go? You can go so far that you can become a devil. And in fact, Iblis became Shaitan. Why? Because of this ability of man even to disobey Allah. And the, and the, and the beauty of it, Allah won't make you believe in him. He won't make you believe in him. It's up to you. Fact is against the deen. If Allah wanted, everyone on earth would have believed. But that's not his plan. The plan is to give you the opportunity to obey him. Man is a sinner. So the month of Ramadan is a way for us to get rid of our sin. Finally, don't go to sleep now. Don't go to sleep. I'm about to give you a wake-up call. And it'd be crazy for me to give you a wake-up call while you're sleeping. So, brothers and sisters, I say this to you. Let us use every possibility that we can to get rid of this sin. Because if we don't get rid of it before we die, and we go before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah may decree, a'udhu billah min dhalik, that we go to the hellfire. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahtahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasoolu amma ba'd. All right. All right. What's the wake up call? A man came to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He came to learn about Islam. It's Alhu an Islam. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, Khamsa salawat fil yom wa layla. The Prophet said, Five prayers a day. And the man asked this question Halaleya gairuhunna. Is there anything more than these five prayers a day? The prophet said, no, except what is extra. And then the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, sell me shahri Ramadan, fast, fast, in the month of Ramadan. Is there anything more than this fast of Ramadan? Anything more? La illa anta tawwa. No, the Prophet said, except what is extra. And then the Prophet mentioned to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as zakat, halaliya ghayruha. The man said, Is there anything more than that zakat? Qala la illa anta tawwa. Except what is extra. And the man turned around and said, he began to walk away, Yaqul, Wallahi, la azidu ala hadha wa la ankusu minhu. I swear by Allah, I'm not going to increase nor diminish. Wa qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, aflaha in sadaqah. He will be successful. He will be successful if he is truthful. Extra. Extra. I remember when I was coming up in school, and I don't know about uh, Tennessee and Nashville, but in New York City, the, the passing grade in those uh, years was 65. You get a 65, you pass. And there are some students, in the end of the year, they get their report card, and they got 65 and they're so happy. Oh, I 
passed. I got 65. I passed. And they, they celebrate because they passed. And then there are other students who get a 98. And they're miserable because they wanted 100. And every once in a while, this teacher would give them an opportunity to get extra credit. And there are students who always want extra credit. They're not even satisfied to get 100. They want extra credit. So today I come to this masjid to push you to see if you want to give extra credit. There are those who will fail miserably. They won't fast in the month of Ramadan. They won't make their prayers. They won't give zakat. And they fail. And on Yom al Qiyamah, Allah have mercy on their soul. Then there are those among us who say, you know, I did the fara'id, I'm okay. I did all the mandatory, I did okay. May Allah give them blessings of Jannah and take them away from the hellfire. And then there are extra people like you who say, I've done the mandatory, now I want to do more. I want to do more for the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm going to give you a wake up call from Umar to determine how much extra you want to do. If I would ask all of you, the brothers and the sisters alike, the elders and the youth alike, if I would tell you, give me three of your favorite companions, I could almost guarantee that at least 50% of you or more will say Abu Bakr radiallahu an. And some 50% or more would probably say Umar ibn al-Kitab. And then the third one, it could be a lot of people, but Abu Bakr and Umar would appear on most of your list. I think you would agree with me. If I would ask you this afternoon in this beautiful month of Ramadan to give me some of the credentials of Umar, you can probably spend the whole day giving the credentials of Umar with his impeccable credentials, his magnificent resume. For instance, you would say, Umar radiallahu an became the second Khalifa. None of us ever Khalifa. You could say that Umar participated in every Ghazwa. He participated in every battle. You say, you know, Umar was something special. You could say that someone asked the Prophet, peace, upon, peace and blessing be upon him, Are you Nasahabu Lake? Who of mankind that you love the most? He said, Aisha radiallahu anha mina rijal abuha thumma man thumma umar. Who do you love the most? Aisha. Then who? Her father, Abu Bakr. Then who? Umar. The son of Ali asked his father, radiallahu an. He said, Dad, what person was the best Muslim after the Prophet, alayhi salat wa salam? His father, Ali, said, Abu Bakr. His son said, then who? He said, Umar. Impeccable credentials, you would say about Umar. An impressive resume, you would say. Let's not stop there. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that whenever, ever, Umar goes down one road, shaitan takes a different road than the road of Umar. That's impressive. Umar is one of the Ashura Mubashura, Ten companions of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, that he promised a Jannah while they were living. Enough? Let me give you one more. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, I saw myself in Al Jannah and I saw a palace and I asked the question, who does this palace belong to? It was said, Omar. And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said that I started to go into the palace until I remember the ghayrah of Ummah. 
the dignity of Umar, the self-respect of Umar, and I didn't go into the palace that belongs to Umar in Al Jannah. It's there. It's there already waiting for Umar. And when he told that to Umar, Umar began to cry and say, Ya Rasulullah, how dare I put my rider in front of you? Enough. Enough of his credentials. Think about this. When Umar became Al Khalifa, he became Amir al Mu'mineen. Every time a delegation came from Yemen, he would ask the question Afikum Awais ibn Amir? Afikum Awais ibn Amir? Afikum Awais ibn Amir? Is there a man among you named Uwais ibn Amir? It seems as if Umar was obsessed with following, finding this man. And he did this for 10 years looking for Uwais ibn Amir. And so finally, he found him. And to Uwais, qala na'am. Are you Uwais? Yes. From the tribe of Mudar, a branch of Karanan? Yes. Did you used to have leprosy and it was cured except the size of a dirham? Yes. Do you have a mother that's living? Yes. He found them. Ten years. Amir al-Mu'mineen, 10 years looking for this man, Uwais ibn Amir. Why? He said to him, the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, told me that there will come a delegation from Yemen. There will be a man among them named Uwais ibn Amir from the tribe of Mudar, from the brands of Karanin. And he would have had leprosy the size of his whole body that was cured except the size of a dirham. And he would have a mother that he was faithful to. That whenever he took an oath by Allah, Allah will fulfill his oath. If you find him, if you could, Umar, ask him to ask forgiveness of Allah for you. What? What? That's it? That's it? With all of the impeccable credentials that Umar have, who of us have anything near that? And yet, 10 years, he's searching for one man so that that man could ask Allah's forgiveness for him, subhanAllah. So brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you something now. Don't you ever rest on your laurels. Never think that you made it, have it made. 